My Fijian Voices is proudly produced in partnership with the British High Commission. My name is Sashi Kiran and this is my Fiji. Located in Tuvu, on the outskirts of Lautoka and down the King's Highway, is Friend Fiji, the foundation for rural integrated enterprises and development, which is a homegrown community development non-governmental organization. The hallmark of Friend's work is the integrated approach it brings into community development, working with communities in rural and underserved regions of Fiji's western, northern and central divisions. This encompasses formal and non-formal settlements and ensures the inclusion of the marginalized members of the community, including those living with disabilities, widows, single parents, orphans and former prisoners. Friend was founded in 2001, post-2000 civil unrest, and we set up our office in 2002, August. So over time, uh, our main focus is alleviation of poverty. So we've been working on socio-economic and health empowerment programs around Fiji. And we normally uh, also very get caught up with disaster response and rehabilitation. So those are the f four key areas that we've been working in. I don't know if you can call it an inspiration or you can call it a pain. Uh, 2000 civil unrest was a very painful time for Fiji. And it was also a time when there was an economic downturn, but people were very skilled and had a lot of resources. So that's where I sort of tried to see what could we do at the grassroots level. I was super based at that time, but I wanted to go in the communities and see how do we assist people to come up uh, in terms of their own livelihoods. But also the 2000 happened because we are racially apart. We live in silos. And I wanted to create a platform where we start to work on the two different ethnic groups to coming together and learning together and building bridges. So those were the two key things that you know, led me to work on formation of the organization. You know, anything you start is not an easy thing, um, especially when nobody around you believes in it. So Friend was such an abstract idea. It was not about going and setting up a factory, for example. It was. You know, when you say socio-economic health empowerment programs, it means nothing. Um, so no, most people didn't believe in me. I left my job to start this. Uh, most people were saying, get a job, get a life, you know, get on with, you know, life sort of thing. Um, when I was, you know, running around rural areas trying to figure out how to get a lot of these things. So most people didn't believe in it. And uh, over the course of the years, you'll see most of the things we've been doing are things that have not been done. They're simple, they're basic. The commonsensical. Recently, somebody very senior told me when we started, for example, the jams and chutneys and even cassava flour, uh, they said, like, why would anybody buy that because everybody makes it at home, you know? So there was so much um, skepticism, there was so much criticism, um, and that's one of the things that break us right in the beginning, I guess. And of course, and the resources were not there. Even though I was known in Donor Circle with another organization, I had to set up the organization, run it for five years, show fun, you know, like you have to show that you're not a fly-by-nighter, you can sustain and survive it before anybody else would believe in you and give you the resources. So all the beginnings kind of problems and that's why now I make sure that when people are starting, I try my best to create enabling spaces and support as much as I can because I did not necessarily have that support in the beginning. So I would work um, for different organizations and I'll use the salary I was getting into paying volunteers 
to you know start that sort of thing because I believed in it. Over the years, um, our journey has so we started with rural uh, communities in Bai and Lotoka and started with livelihood. So in 2003, we had launched the income options of the the different jars, chutneys and jams that in the market. We had set up a rural savings scheme. And I'll tell you, when COVID happened, a lot of my staff had much more money in the safe scheme than they had in the FNP of eligibility, for example. Um, so we had this rural savings schemes. Um, and uh, over the years, we've seen when you go into any village, you, what, one thing that will be very obvious would be the disability due to NCDs, the non-communicable disease, the amputations and all. So in the communities, we've been working with backyard gardens, um, helping with mobility aid, physiotherapy, um, families where toilets are too far and people have to crawl on the ground to get to toilets so helping them build toilets and things. Um, plus uh, organic is something we strongly believe in and we've been working on. So for the last more than a decade we've been organic, working on organics and have set up organic communities in, in interior of Ra and interior of Vanualevu. They're certified not only in the PGS but you know under a US uh, standard as well. So, and the, one of the big things, I think post TC Evan, when we saw a lot of um, homes being destroyed, TC Winston, so we've worked with the communities to help them rebuild. So, we look at the statistics and we see how do we intervene in a country with our cultural makeup, you know. Um, so it has to be something that will work in the communities in the long run. Um, so yeah, almost 20 years we've been doing those things. COVID-19, uh, while we had started preparing a staff in February, a month earlier, in knowing that something could happen, we didn't know what will happen, I mean, that it could be this severe. First lockdown happened in Latoka. So while we shut down our office, we realized pretty within a week that people who were casual or hand to mouth or, you know, who did not have, and something that came out very obvious was even though Nandi was a town and Latoka is a city, um, Nandi had much more formal kind of jobs, it seemed, or you know, initially it seemed. And Lotoka, we very quickly, within a week, when economy was not running, we saw people becoming hand to mouth. So within a week, we started mobilizing food packs and uh, NCD medications for people living with diabetes and hypertension who could not reach hospital because it was a COVID active hospital. And then TC Harold hit. So then we had to work with you know people who were being impacted by disaster as well as. Uh, impacted economically because of the pandemic and uh, so we've worked with uh, some of the islands around here to Batulele trying to help them rebuild the 60 plus houses that they were totally destroyed and uh, when things just kept going we realized that food bank is a necessity so we've got a food bank happening in Lotoka and we in partnership with Fiji Women's Crisis Centre and other NGOs we set up a COVID um, Alliance Response Centre in Nandi and in partnership with TI Sai Sangam. So there we are doing food bank on a daily basis, as supporting people with food, with seedlings. So in coming months they have uh, food growing and uh, working on a whole range of income generation options. Um, we've been able to create a lot of cooperations and partnerships with various organisations on the ground between Lotoka and Nandi who are responsive. Uh, also, uh, corporates have uh, joined hands and we've seen an amazing, amazing cooperation and partnerships in, in dealing with the, the pandemic, uh, the different, the crisis that is evolving out of Nandi in particular, though Singatoka and Lotoka are also impacted. Lotoka, we saw things shifted a little bit once the sugar mills opened and we don't know what it'll be like once November hits and sugar mills close down in Lotoka. I suspect Lotoka could be suffering uh, again and parts of Singatoka is quite bad. Um, we're also very concerned about the outer islands of um, Isamas and Mamanudas who are very tourism dependent and other livelihoods have not picked up there. So yeah, so we're doing lots of different things to make sure that we're alleviating the pain of the people and ensuring that they don't go you know, deeper in the doldrums, especially when the minute people were hit and the uncertainties, we've seen a lot of uh, mental health challenges as well as economic and as well as health because when the NCD meds are not available in hospital, people who are earning or the children who are earning could buy it and now they don't have the capacity to do that. It's my heart's calling, I guess. <laughs> so, 
uh, you know, sometimes when things happen, like crisis is evolving now, it's something that your heart calls out that you have to do. And, and I guess not knowing what we're doing half the time, like when you know this, this crisis evolve, is evolving and we're having to learn on the job as well. So while we learn from our past experiences and from other researchers, it's also learning from the people on the ground to evolve things. Um, that's, that's, it's, it's a constant challenge and it's constant learning and that keeps you on your toes. Well, FRIEND uh, was started to try and bring things better for people in terms of love. And it's, it's wonderful to see a lot more entrepreneurship now. Uh, people are forced to look at their skills and resources. I'd like to see Fiji really appreciating uh, all the blessings we've had in terms of we have such beautiful local food, but we're eating bad food and you know, causing ourselves diseases. We have beautiful products. I mean, we import sea salt into this country. We import turmeric into this country when our hills are full of turmeric. So appreciating the local products and seeing how on earth do we actually make not only livelihoods but protect and look after our resources as well. And my dream would be the day um, the different ethnic groups stop living in silos and actually learn to really understand, uh, learn languages, learn culture and appreciate the diversity. We, don't, we cannot become one people overnight. We, but appreciate the hum humanness in each other and really live like a, the way the world should be, the, you know, the way Fiji should be showing the path to the world with real genuine love and harmony. That would be like the ideal dream that nobody from outside, no politician, nobody could come and break us apart because we've, we've, we've hacked it through, through so much bad times and so much good times together that we should not be separated the way we do get each election happens or each time a crisis happens. So like that would be the ultimate dream for Fiji. My name is Sashi Kiran and you are watching my Fijian voices on my TV. Coming up next, join me in Bawasamu and the home of the famous Black Sand. We meet Jay Bao from Natale Ra. You're watching My Fijian Voices. My Fijian Voices is proudly produced in partnership with the British High Commission.